Hello everybody, welcome back. Greetings to you. I am pleased to share with you very welcome good news. Back. We have been assigned by the diocese a seminarian for the summer of 2021. And I'm pleased to introduce to you Deacon Jim O'Rourke. Welcome, welcome, and I should say welcome back because you were assigned as a deacon to St. Paul the Apostle in Our Lady of Mount Carmel parishes and now St. Adalbert. So welcome, welcome and welcome back. It's great to <laughs> we be here. have to pray for our seminarians. We have to support vocations with our prayers. We have to support our future priests in many ways. And of course, all the ministries of the Diocese of Albany. And many are served by your contributions and mine in the diocesan appeal, no? Certainly, most yeah. certainly. I mean, we have some like in Catholic Charities, this is a, a very important part of the ministry of the church, no? Oh, of yes. course, of course. Yes. They have several programs that, uh, mm -hmm. that they do as well as um, yeah. uh, coordinating with uh, other agencies uh, throughout the diocese and uh, yes. it's just immeasurable the great work that Catholic Charities does. Yes, and how about this broadcast? You are watching us here with the help of the Information Technology Office. We would not be able to put on what we do without our fine volunteers, our workers in the vineyard, uh, but especially the assistance of the Information Technology Office, the Office of Marriage and Family Life to assist in the formation of couples, and also vocations. Did you receive this postcard in the US mail? This is a postcard from the Diocese of Albany, our annual diocesan appeal, securing our destiny. Don't discard it if you received it. Maybe you have, but that's okay because we will give ways to ponder the meaning of this card. If you receive this card in the mail, it means that you have not yet made an offering to support the works of the entire Church of Albany. I ask you to please ponder this because this is very important. We have to support the many, many different functions and work of the Church to proclaim the good news. You know me from the tribunal of the Diocese of Albany as well to support the journey of those who are separated or divorced, to find a path of peace in and with the Church of Jesus Christ. That is supported not by pennies from heaven, though do we have prayers from heaven, of course, but by you and by me through the diocesan appeal. And how about the future of our church when we need assistance for the baptism of our young, weddings, funerals, we are here for you. We have to support our future priests and deacons. Do you pay any money to go to the seminary? No, I don't. I don't pay any of the tuition. Uh, even my books are covered. Oh, praise God for this. You know how expensive it is to go to school, the graduate level school, every year for four or five years? I was assigned to Catholic University for canon law school studies three full years beyond the seminary. And I didn't have to pay because you paid, whether you knew it or not. And I thank you for your kindness. Because if I had to pay it back or if Deacon Jim had to pay back tuition, we would be broke. We would never be able to pay anybody anything back. It's so expensive to go to school now, but every seminarian of our diocese advancing toward major seminary goes to the formation program at least four years and beyond and there is a significant tuition bill for every single one of our seminarians. There are five men who are going to be ordained priests coming up on June 19th here in Albany. And what a blessing. But we, through our donations of diocesan appeal, have supported our seminarians all along. Whether we knew it or not, every one of our contributions helps along the way. So this is an appeal to you, our dear viewers, please don't discard or discount the diocesan appeal. And I know it's been a difficult and challenging time with the virus, no question, but we still support the work of the church and our future. Good men like Deacon Jim, and thank God the Lord has sent him our way for the summer of 2021. And Lord willing, one year you're gonna be ordained to the priesthood 
and you're going to serve and help so many people along the way. Thanks to you and all of us who have donated to the diocesan appeal, securing our destiny, working with one another for the future of the church. So we'll pray together about our diocesan appeal. We have just a few days left. It comes to an end. The annual appeal, June 30th, just in a few days. But lots of time to pray over how we can support the works of the church with not just our time and our talent, but also our treasure, because we return to the Lord what he has given to us. Welcome. Excellent. Glad you're you. here. <laughs> Take good care, everybody. God's peace be with you. Blessings now. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, to our broadcast of the Mass, this time from St. Paul the Apostle Church here in Schenectady. Welcome to our dear friends from St. Adalbert, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and of course, St. Paul the Apostle Parishes. This is a warm welcome again to Deacon Jim O'Rourke, assigned now by the Diocese of Albany as our seminarian, and we are praying for our dear seminarians, rejoicing that the Lord has been good to us along the way. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and by our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit, and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
worthily and well, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day. And through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them. But to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If I were to tell you that a full-time employee has an annual salary of $6,544. What would you think of such a salary for this worker? Once again, a salary of $6,544 per year. You would say to me that worker receives very low wages. Who is his employer? Something is not fair. Are you aware that in Tanzania, the average worker receives the annual salary of only $6,544 per year? Here in the United States, we are blessed in many ways and sometimes we don't even realize it. Where workers may receive 20,000, 50,000, 80, 100,000 or more per year. It's not that way across the globe for every worker. Some persons have very, very difficult conditions. And we as the body of Christ are called to assist in some way. Just as you have so kindly offered from your treasures to the diocesan appeal of the Diocese of Albany, New York, Know well that there are many different dioceses and apostolic vicariates and prefectures across the world that are in desperate need of assistance. For those of you who cannot come to church, you may remember when you did that once per year, a, a priest would arrive in church and he would be the mission priest. Now, before the virus, this would happen most summers. The priest would come to join us, and the second collection that day would be for the particular appeal of a, of a certain diocese or a community. And it is the same for this year in 2021, except now we have the means of social communication for our TV mass, and sometimes it's complicated to bring the mission priest in 
because we did not know where we would be with the epidemic even just three months ago. Praise God, we've made great developments and strides. We're praying for those doctors and scientists for the vaccine. And we pray that the vaccine penetrates further across the world population, especially in places like India and Brazil, with many people still struggling from the effects of the COVID virus. Pretend, if you will, that I am the mission priest and our mission for this year is the Diocese of Kigoma in Tanzania, the site where the average worker makes $6,544 in one year. Keep that in mind when I share with you this year's appeal. So you will pretend for a moment that I am the mission speaker for the Diocese of Kigoma. And I read for you what has been prepared for us to share with all of the people here on TV or on the internet, the appeal and the real need in the Diocese of Kigoma. Kigoma is a very rural diocese in Tanzania, which has about 2.2 million people under our care, of whom 25% are Catholics. We have 27 parishes with 270 outstation churches being ministered by our 66 priests, 620 catechists, 125 nuns, and about 10 religious brothers. The church in Kigoma is truly the work of evangelization among people of different backgrounds and religious beliefs, such as Muslims and believers in the African traditional religion. Our catechists carry the vital daily pastoral management tasks in our outstation churches, where the daily presence of our priests is not feasible. Our parish priests who may have 10 or more outstation churches, 10, that's a big number. We complain here in the United States about four or five for one priest like myself, but 10, gosh. With 10 or more outstation churches are challenged to travel by Jeeps or motorcycles on poor condition of unpaved roads and paths to reach their parishioners. The poverty of our people prevents them to meet transportation as well as other costs to upkeep their churches and to support their priests and catechists. The circle of poverty among our people affects the quality of involvement in areas of education, health care and, and relief services. We as the Diocese of Kigoma need to address these issues so that our people may get better education, health care and supplying relief services when needed. Our diocese has another extraordinary pastoral care to the refugees from the Congo DRC and Burundi who are refugee camps in the territory of our diocese. On top of preaching the gospel of Christ to all these people, the Catholic Church herself involves fully in the provision of social services to impoverished rural communities. Since left to itself, the government in Tanzania can do little to support them. The funds we raise from this mission this weekend will support two of our ministries. First, a ministry to the orphan children. Lack of funds and high level of poverty among our people challenges the Diocese of Kigoma at present to sustain two centers of, for orphans and street children, which are located in the headquarters of our diocesan see. These two centers have the total of 553 children who have been left without parents after one or both of their parents died with HIV or AIDS pandemic, as well as other tropical diseases. Having been left on their own by their impoverished extended families, these children end up looking at the church as their existing mother and father. At the centers, we need to assure these children receive three hot meals per day and also to address their academic and health issues. 
So that's the ministry to the orphan children. The second, ministry to refugees. Bordering the war countries, our diocese continues to receive an influx of refugees from DRC Congo and Burundi. We have three big refugee camps located in our diocese with more than 150,000 refugees. This population arrives in the camps with nothing. They are wounded physically, psychologically, and spiritually. As the hosting diocese, we need to reach out to bring them the light of Christ. It saddens us to hear traumatic and horrific stories since our refugee population have gone through their lives. They need special pastoral care. The generosity of our people to reach out to our refugee sisters and brothers in the camps is also challenged because most of our people who would have been prospective donors have the income of one dollar per day to fend for themselves. One dollar per day. It is for this reason that we as the Diocese of Kigoma go out to the ends of the earth to request spiritual, financial, and material support to fund these ministries. Dear family in Christ, I hope you will join me in supporting the Diocese of Kigoma in these aims. If you feel inclined by the Holy Spirit, which I pray you do, to make an offering to the Diocese of Kigoma for these needs, please note at the end of this broadcast the telephone numbers and the email contacts for our three parish communities. And any offering that you mark and give with the marking Diocese of Kigoma or Mission Appeal on the envelope will be directed precisely for the needs of this Mission Appeal to the Diocese of Kigoma. We have no idea in America how well we have been blessed by God. And to hear stories like this tug at my heart, even as I read Father's homily to support the Diocese of Kigoma. And we do not take anything with us into the kingdom of heaven. There is no purpose in hoarding for the purpose of hoarding our resources. But we share to our dear brothers and sisters in the body of Christ who are in great need. And we have it well here in America, praise God. But many people are in need and I appeal to you on behalf of our brethren in the Diocese of Kigoma to make a kind and considerate offering. This is how the mustard seed of the gospel grows. Materially, there may be challenges, but the faith remains strong. God is good. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we pray for the growth of God's church, let us now offer our petitions to the living God. For Pope Francis, for Bishop Edward, and all who watch over Holy Mother Church, may they continue as zealous preachers of the gospel 
inspired by the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in a world torn by sin and strife, the people of God may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord, tearing down boundaries and revealing God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers and all who feed us, may their harvest be plentiful and rewarding this growing season. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Catholic educators and teachers in our parish faith formation programs, may they nourish the seed of faith planted within the children and the adults that they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all men and women discerning a vocation in the church, may the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary guide them in their discernment and studies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the special intentions that we celebrate at Mass today, all who have died in our parish families, and all the prayers that we hold deeply within our, the silence of our hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, hear our prayers and unite what we ask for to the Christ for help of all our brothers and sisters. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and that of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the high. Yes. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward Scharfenberger, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Thank you. Peace be with you, everyone. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of your faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. It has been a blessing to be with you for this broadcast of the Mass, and I hope and pray that you have heard a word of inspiration to touch your heart especially about the blessings that the Lord has given us and that God calls you and me to share with one another. Don't forget, if you are not able to connect to the Internet and you would like to receive our weekly bulletin in the U.S. mail, kindly contact us by phone at any of our parish offices, the phone number at the end of the broadcast, 
and we would be happy to send you the weekly bulletin. So we keep in touch with you in God's peace on the road ahead. Take good care, everyone. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Savior God to thee. 